I adapted today's invocation from one I found on RevGal Blog Pal's website. It was written by Catherine Burgess. Won't you pray with me? Today, Holy One, I am grateful for the season of creation, this time of harvest, when all are gathering in the fruits of our labors from earlier in the year. Apples of many different varieties are ripe for picking. And we are gathering them in to make apple pies and crumbles, apple sauces and butters. Pumpkins have been piled high so that the little children can choose the ones they want to turn into jack-o'-lanterns to ward off dark spirits and brighten a dark October night. The sky is a different color of blue this month, almost iridescent, and the leaves stand out in stark relief as they change from green to yellow or orange or brown or red. It is these changes which remind us that all colors are beautiful. It is these changes which allow us to appreciate the differences among all of us and to see the beauty in each person. As we move through this season, feeling the slight chill in the air, but still enjoying the bright sun, help us to make the most out of every single day, for we never know which will be the last one. Some of us are in the autumn, of our lives, and this is the time when we also reap the benefits of what was planted in us so long ago. Thank you, Holy One, for the many harvests we have experienced and for the many harvests that are yet to come. Amen. <laughs> Should I stand here? Can you hear me? Should I go up there? <laughs> so because this message was asking the question, what is on your minds today? What were you thinking today as you got up and came around that dressed in church? And you came in there and walked in and sat down in the pews. 
You don't have to share them. But I wonder what you were thinking in your mind. What stood out in your morning thus far? The weather is changing, the leaves are beautiful, the temperature is going to go down this next week. CBS Sunday morning, thinking about the fact that he's our last moral president. Uh, so that's what I was thinking about. Well, that's a good thought. And, and, and I think I never really thought of quite about that way. But yes. Where is our morals today? Where is our ethics? What is happening today? Bruce Gaynor Gator Ginsburg. Uh, told this story, and it was re-told uh, by uh, somebody on uh, uh, NPR, NPR, and it was about when she was growing up, and she uh, had a job, a job, and she they had children, and she was they were married, her husband worked, and the school always called her the woman, but there was a problem with the child. Not that there was, but you always did. We had children at some point in time. And one day she told the school, it's the man's turn. I'm tired of doing Sometimes we uh, overlook just small things like that as equality, and uh, we as men or as people, we overlook seeing things that are normative. We don't always see them. I like that story because of the simplicity. Empathy. Do we have the ability to walk in someone else's shoes? Brianna, where do we walk in this case? Is there room for empathy within us? We see that there is no question about it. But was there room for de escalation? As I listened to the DA speak Wednesday afternoon and gave his uh, view or his opinion or his ruling, but no one was accountable for discharging the 30 bullets into Brianna's apartment. I thought at the time, does this add new meaning to Paul St. Paul's word? The letter of the law kills, but the spirit gives life. How do we see this? It's a difficult thing. It's not easy. Again, policing is difficult. There's so much misinformation. Where do you go? Is it a new meaning to the commandment, thou shalt not murder, unless the law says it's okay? How do we apply this commandment in a situation such as this? Just because the law says it's okay, does that make it okay? The new candidate, Amy, who is up for the Supreme Court, she is a textualist, an original originalist, the original intent of the Constitution is where she comes from. What were the writer's original intent in the Constitution? Is it always that clear? Or should we look at the spirit of the Constitution? Where do we lie in these issues? Jesus told a parable 
This is today's scripture reading, a parable of the vineyard's workers. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into the vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. And so they went. He went out again at about noon, and about three in the afternoon, and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and told still others standing around. He asked them, why have not, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last ones hired and going to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Those who were hired last for only one hour, they said. And you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the work in the heat of the day. But he answered to them, Am I not being unfair to you, friend? Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the ones who was hired last, the same as I give to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. What do you see in this parable? What do you hear in this parable? It's a symbolic meaning. It has symbolic meaning. The vineyard is usually portrayed as a blessing or a measure of wealth or prosperity. Its fruit is a, a pleasure fruit. You eat the grapes, you make the wine. It's considered to be a place of contentment. It also represents a relationship that God had with Israel. It was a time of, in which if you are planting vineyards, you are well set, settled in your land. You're not going to move because it takes a while to grow a vineyard. You just don't do that in one day. So you, you have to have land and works of the land and the uh, be good stores of the land, and then you begin to plant a vineyard. In the Middle East, I'm told there's many, many vineyards. I see a lot of vineyards around here anymore in various different places. It's a, 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 a it's like symbolic of a whole, whole relationship, a whole uh, ego system in which one lives. Also, what I see in this uh, scripture is there are time periods in which the land of the world has. I somewhat equate them with the hours that were required in which they were to pray. Nine, noon, three, and six. Although, although it doesn't say six, it says one hour before, and that would have been six. There are different times when the person went out and hired different people along the way. The traditional way of understanding this parable was that 
the first people hired to agree to work for the areas, as long as they're the Israelite people, or the Jewish people. They agreed to be faithful to Yahweh, the God of Israel, and they got their reward. As long as they uh, did what they were supposed to do, they were rewarded with prosperity, and they did quite well. Only when they did is when the things went on. So they represent people who are uh, having agreement with God, so to speak. If I roll those over into today's theological beliefs, I would say it would be people who believe that they deserve to be saved, and they are saved, and when they get to heaven, they're going to say, well, or in the process of, of, of as I've heard it various different times around here, uh, that I don't want to be in heaven as such as the person is saying. So these are the people that are socially deserving and think they have the right to have against everybody else. It's a theological system that is very much alive among all the men. God's chosen, God's elected, and it's against everyone else. The ones that are hired at noon is not traditionally to be the Christian people. They were hired, but they didn't agree. Nobody agreed from this time on. Only one segment of people agreed to work for denarius. That was a set amount. A denarius was considered to be a day's wage at that time. The, all the, the other ones agreed, or the master of the vineyard said, whatever is right. Whatever is right. That's an interesting term. I will pay you whatever is right. Where is that today? Whatever is right. We expect something for something that we do. Do we do something for because it's right? Yes, some of us do. A lot of us do things just because of that. But whatever is right. How do we apply that today? Well, whatever is right. All justify actions that are happening. Is that right? Whatever is right, they agreed. And they went to work. Also, later in the day, two more times, he went out and said, come on, come on in. No one can really give me, in a, 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 that I read, exactly who these uh, uh, third and fourth people are. Because in order to do that, you have to look at it in a universal idea of God went out and saved everyone. In the end, he just said, okay, come on in. Because at one hour before, so he goes out at noon, he goes out at, at three, and then one hour before the end of the day, he goes out and says, come on in. What does that mean? At that point, if, if you went out to the marketplace, you're going to get whatever is left to some degree at the end of the day. One hour before the, the closing hour. And then he hands each one of them, the ones that worked the least, got the same as the ones that worked the hardest. I see that as being everybody gets a, a token L A. Uh, denarius, or in this case, I think the denarius means salvation or the saving of one's soul. Everyone gets that. I don't know how else you're going to see, but it seems like those who seem like they are the best and the most righteous complain. Uh, as usual. Isn't that the way it is? Isn't that how we function in this world? But Jesus says, don't I, I or the, the, the master of the vineyard said, don't I have the right to do what I want? Why do we say to God, you must do this and you must do that? Vineyards usually produce good crops. But as sometimes, as illustrated in the Old Testament, they, they use the story of 
There we will enjoy the good fruit and its new wine. What do we believe? What is in our thoughts today? What will stand out today? Thank you. 
I don't know if I don't know if she's there, but today is Lena's birthday. Do what? Lena's birthday. Oh, that's not very loud. How old is he? Lena. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said. <laughs> okay. Lena's birthday. I can't help it. Sometimes my ears are just what they are. I saw that too on my Facebook page. <laughs> ah, you might as well just follow that. I have concern for. Our area schools get in Georgia some COVID cases, and I just know that they're on the rise in schools more now. So, hopefully, they don't get real sick. But there is a couple of them. Yeah. Is there any over here to say? Yeah, so far, can't enjoy. Right. Yeah. What about them? The COVID cases. So I think they're gonna go remote for at least a couple weeks now to a way to pass on a couple cases in their school. Can't we'll go back October 13th or 14th, something like that. And Troy's going virtual this week. I think you now I have seen that the superintendent had put something on and you know we contact people that might have been in contact. They have to get the most of this Friday for a few longer. Yeah. I think, yeah, all their stuff. So, so just with the school children and everybody that they have <laughs> home to. There was a case, uh, two cases over at Alton Church. Uh, they didn't attend during the time that they were before they got there, before they tested positive. And his parents got uh, COVID also, but they're all doing better. And they're on the better. And he got uh, plasma. The plasma thing and made him a lot better, but his father was on a respirator. And so, I'm sure it's been a And that's kind of concerning that this is going to come back out the way the school's getting back, you know. Any others? It's a beautiful day. I got this morning a little bit outside of the porch. Is there a cricket in here? I think she did. I don't know. I didn't know what that was. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just the joys that add to the service. I thought, oh, yeah, that's a wonderful thing. No problem. It's a wonderful thing. What is that? Or am I here? Thanks. Uh, we can have visitors. Carol's father used to say that 
sometimes the things he heard were much more interesting than what had been said. Create a reality that is for sure. Ah, uh, you yeah, might as well But it is a beautiful day. It's going to get colder. We have a walnut tree meeting. This is the first to lose its leaves, and it's about half gone. You know, so it's yesterday the leaves were blown, and they were looking out across the tree, off the tree, and over the ground. I just love the beauty. Any others? We can have yeah. visitors now. If you, call, if you call ahead, you we can have visitors over here if you call ahead and make a reservation. A staff person has to be free to make sure we don't touch. <laughs> Good to see you, Annie. You, you too. Uh, any others? Love you, Annie. I think they're awesome. Thank you. Uh, any others? Put our joy in our hearts and minds together. Lord, we love the sights and the sets of the changing leaves. They are the bright symbols of this season. Yet your word tells us that if we believe in you, our faith can have green leaves and fruit in every season of life. Help us to develop well-watered faith with deep roots in the truth of your word. We praise you, Lord, for sustaining life in every season. You make everything beautiful in its own time. You always give us reasons to praise you. Help us look for reasons to praise you each day this autumn season. Heavenly Father, we have things on our mind. We are blessed. It's a beautiful autumn day, late summer. The leaves are changing. It's beautiful. You have made a great vineyard on this earth. Help us to look at the greatness and drink the essence of this wine of the vineyard in a positive and uplifting way. Lord, I ask you to be with the churches, our church, as we move forward in this time of COVID. We don't always have answers. Help us to step forward in faith one foot step at a time. Help us to keep our feet sure so that we do not fall down. Lift us up. Lord, I pray for this. Where do you begin, Lord? And how do you pray? We ask for peace and understanding. We ask you to be with the police and the policing as they move forward into the communities. Protect them and watch over them. Protect the people that they will police. Help them to be willing to step back. We don't always push forward with force. We don't always have answers. Lots of questions. The upcoming election. Sometimes we just wish it was all over. Lord, just be with us as a nation. Bring us back together to the center a little more. Help us to understand that diversity is a great thing, not a negative thing. Lord, I ask you to be with our communities, our schools, our teachers, and our students as they are dealing with COVID-19. Lord, just protect them and watch over them and may it not grow. Heal the ones that have it. Help the teachers and the superintendents with wisdom to deal with the situation as it arises. It's an ever-changing always move. The same answer doesn't always work. Today. We ask you to be with me in our birthday. 
is not here with us, be with her as she celebrates a day in her life. Lift her up and her family. Lord, sometimes we walk in faith each day, not always knowing, but ever pressing forward. Help us to shine our light of love, compassion, empathy, and help us to be positive. Help us to look at things in an uplifting way. Yes, we can be critical. We have opinions. We don't always agree. Help us to move forward in a bright and light way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Loving God in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come, it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for the benediction if you can. May the God of love and peace be with you every day and every hour and every minute of this list the coming week. Go in peace. Amen. Make, I'm doing okay. Make an appointment. Call and get an appointment. We're, we're good here. Good. Take care. Take care. Yeah. Take care. You take care too. Love to see you, Annie. You too, Annie. I'm glad you can have visitors. Yeah. I can't find the barber. I gotta get my hair cut. If I know a barber that cuts off, it is growing. Bring a pair of shears. I'll do it. Take Thank care, you, folks. Thank you. Yep. Hi, Mom. Hello. How are you? Hello. 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 Good to see you, girls. Janice, put jars in the screen. Janice. 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 Gone? Gone. Sorry. Maybe next week. Next week. Great to see you, purple hair. <laughs> I'm glad, glad you could have visitors now. That's good. Me too. Come on up. <laughs> I, I, I had a good watermelon crop this year. Good. Bring one. Okay, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Annie. Uh -huh. I love seeing Princess behind you there. Oh, yes. On your wall. <laughs> Very different lady now. Yeah. Oh, growing up. <laughs> okay. Good to see y'all. Good to see you too. Thank you so much, Shane. No problem. Well, it means you can't be at church, but 
you should train somebody at your house to do that. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oops, I need to stop recording.